Hi, my name is John Harris, and I live in Greenville, and I am happy to get to participate in, in this week's Tall Tales. Um, the book I'm going to share with you is a book that's called Mr. Tuck and the Thirteen Heroes. And it's a book that, that I wrote, and my daughter, named Sophie, illustrated um, a few years ago. And I'll tell you a little bit about the book before we start, um, and then we'll read it together. The book is about a family friend of ours whose name was Brooks Tuck. And um, many years ago, he was an elementary school principal in Georgia, in a county in Georgia. And he was principal during a time where it was pretty hard to be principal of, of schools. And this is a story um, about him, but it's more a story about some of the people and children that he knew and really thought of as his heroes. So that's who this story is about, and I'm excited to share it with you. So Mr. Tuck and the 13 Heroes. It's hard to believe now, but there was a time in our country's history when white children and black children could not go to school together. Things started to change for the better in 1954 when the Supreme Court said that it was against the law to separate students. Some places took longer than others to start changing. Henry County in Georgia was one of those places. In 1966, the court finally ordered Henry County to integrate, to let black children and white children go to the same school. Many people in Henry County did not like this. But since they had to do it, they decided to let it happen in just one school. And that school was going to be Fairview Elementary. And a man named Mr. Tuck was the principal. Before Mr. Tuck came to Fairview, it was a school that was in the worst shape of all the white schools in the county. Mr. Tuck wanted to change that. He and his wife did a lot of work to make it look better. They even put on new paint on the walls themselves. And under Mr. Tuck's leadership, Fairview became a very good school. Mr. Tuck believed that all children should be able to go to a good school. When the county needed one school to let the children attend, Mr. Tuck quickly volunteered Fairview. And you might notice that the people around the table here were not all that pleased about that idea. This made many white people in the Fairview area very mad. And they did some mean things to Mr. Tuck's family. They called his house and said terrible things. They painted mean words on the road outside of his house. They tried to scare the family by saying that there was a bomb in their car. They even threatened to hurt Mr. Tuck's son, Mike. All of this was very difficult for Mr. Tuck and his family, but he knew he was doing the right thing. When black families were given the chance to send their students to Fairview, only a few families responded, 13 children in all. The school that the black children attended was in terrible shape. The books were old and missing pages. The desks were broken. The building was falling apart. The families of the 13 children wanted their sons and daughters to have something better, even though they knew that changing schools would be very hard for them. The weeks leading up to the first day of school were very difficult. There were lots of loud, mean-spirited protests. The biggest protest was on the first day of school itself. Early that morning, hundreds of people lined the sidewalk at the school. And when the bus carrying the 13 black children arrived, the children could hear and see the people shouting at them. A few people had guns and ropes holding them up to intimidate the children. The children were so scared. As they looked over the crowd toward the school, they could see a man step through the front door. 
Many of the students recognized the man as Mr. Tuck, the white man who they had heard was going to be their principal. The crowd insulted and threatened Mr. Tuck as he walked towards the bus. Mr. Tuck stepped onto the bus and spoke to the frightened children. Boys and girls, he said, this is your school. I am Mr. Tuck, your principal. We are going to get through this together, he said. I am so glad you're here. Mr. Tuck took the hand of one of the girls up front and the two of them stepped off the bus and walked hand in hand up the walk toward the school. Once the little girl was safely inside the building, Mr. Tuck stepped back outside, locked the door behind him, and went back toward the bus. Mr. Tuck made 13 trips to the bus that morning. He held the hands of the students and he even carried some of the smaller ones. The children arrived safely to school and Fairview Elementary was integrated at long last. The next few weeks and months were still very hard for Mr. Tuck and the 13 children, but things did get better eventually. And years later, when Mr. Tuck was asked about his experiences that day, he said, this is not my story. This is the children's story. They were the ones that were the real heroes that day. Many years later, after that memorable morning, Mr. Tuck became sick and had to go to the hospital. He did get better, but he had to stay there for a while. He drifted in and out of sleep frequently during his stay in the hospital. He was not aware of much, but he could tell that there were many doctors and visitors coming and going. As the days went on, he noticed that there was a particular nurse named Melinda who was in the room a lot, sometimes during the day and sometimes late at night. You are in here all the time, he said to the nurse. I've got plenty of people here to take care of me. You should go home and get some rest. Melinda smiled. Mr. Tuck, you don't recognize me, but I sure do know you. You held my hand and walked with me to my first day at Fairview Elementary. You didn't leave me on that day, and I'm not leaving you. We'll get through this together, she said. Mr. Tuck smiled at her and said, I'm so glad you're here. And that's the end. Thanks for listening. Hi, I'm Robin Bayouk. I'm the Greer Cultural Arts Supervisor for the City of Greer. I hope you enjoyed the story of Mr. Tuck and his 13 heroes. It was quite an emotional one. I got a little choked up. And I have some very simple, easy crafts that you can do to honor the story. So we have some little people heroes. Besides superheroes, there are everyday heroes like nurses and teachers. And I'm going to show you how to make this cute little get well card or thinking of you card and then we also have some rocks some gratitude stones that I'm going to show you how to make really simply that you can share your love with somebody else or um, when you hold it you can think about all the things you're grateful for or love in your life so for our heart craft you're going to need colored paper either copy paper or construction paper markers scissors glue stick or you can use crayons or color pencils whatever you happen to have first you want to decide what colors you want in your heart I just happen to have some color copy paper around when I made my first set of hearts and this is construction paper you can use cardstock it's a little thicker to cut but I like the thinner paper so you want to line your paper all up evenly and fold it in half and make a nice crease then you're going to take a marker and you're going to draw half of a heart and I like to start near the edge of the paper so that I don't waste a lot of paper. Then we're going to cut that heart on the fold. We're cutting them all together at one time so that they're all the exact same size. Now you're going to take each one of your hearts apart and you're going to crease it. So I have them lined up in the color order that I want them to be and now I'm going to glue them together. Pretty simple, just going to use 
good old glue stick here, just on one side of the heart, and then I'm going to line up the next color. Now you have all your hearts glued together and you let them dry. My hearts got a little bit out of alignment, so I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to go back and trim them up. So that's a little better. They're lined up better now. You can use any color for the back of your card. I just happen to like whites because the other colors stand off pretty bright from it. So you take your card and you fold the paper in half. Now we're going to place the heart in the fold of the card. So the same thing, we're going to put glue on one side. And this glue I'm going to do the entire side. I'm going to put it in the crease of the card. And before I glue the other side, I'm going to fold this up halfway and line up the edges and fold it over. That way I know the heart is lined up inside of my fold. And I'm going to go back with my glue stick. I'm going to press it. And I'm going to separate all my pretty colors so that you can see the heart inside. Now at this time you can write something that you would like to write. You can also write your notes before you put the heart in the card. And that's all we have to do. For our little hero people, you'll need paper towel tube or a gift wrap tube or a toilet paper tube. You'll need some construction paper, scissors, some tape, some markers, and maybe a glue stick. To make our little nurse hero, we're going to start with a tube. We used a paper towel holder and we cut it to the length that we wanted. And using colored paper, we cut a piece that would go all the way around the tube, like this. Okay, and then we cut the little nurse's uniform. We cut a rectangle with the little V-neck because when they wear scrubs, it looks like a little V-neck. I'm going to line it up with the bottom and wrap it around. And again, you can use a glue stick or you can tape it. So there we have our little scrub all ready to go. So to make the little arms, it wraps around the by. We cut this long rectangular piece out because it is a short sleeve. We cut a little triangle on the end. And to make the little arms, the same way we did our last craft, we cut the heart out and then cut the heart in half. We're going to put some hair on our little person, our little nurse, which is just a long flat piece. We cut a little bun to go in the back of her hair. And of course, we don't want to forget the little insignia of a nurse. It's a little white hat with the red cross on the top. To create her scrubs, we're going to put a little waistline and put some pants and some pockets on our little nurse. That's how you make a little nurse. And if you're really artistic, you can draw on a stethoscope. To make our gratitude rocks, you need to go find some smooth, flat rocks that you like a lot and fit good in your hand. You need some old tissue paper from a present, some Mod Podge, or you could also use some Elmer's glue and a paintbrush, water, and a cup. To make our gratitude stones, the first thing we need to do is go find some stones that we like a lot. Um, you, they can be any size, they can be little, they can be big. I like this one. It's nice and flat and fits in my hand nicely. So I took all the stones to the sink and I washed them and I put them out in the sun to dry. First thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare the stone for the tissue paper. And I've got some Mod Podge. And this is gloss Mod Podge, but you can get satin Mod Podge too. And this is like a glue. And you're just going to brush it on your stone. So after you put your first coat of Mod Podge on, which is like a primer coat, you're going to take one of your hearts 
that you've cut out and you're going to put some Mod Podge on the back of the tissue paper and flip it over and stick it on your little stone and then you're going to put another coat of Mod Podge on top and see I'm having trouble getting it to stick a little bit so I just have to be really gentle and this is going to dry as clear as this when it's finished and this has two coats of Mod Podge on so after this one dries completely I'll come and put another coat on and I made this out of some leftover tissue paper that I had from a gift bag and I just would like to show you that here I did a purple, orange, and yellow and pink heart and the lighter colors don't show up on the rock so the brighter colored tissue papers will make the heart stand off from the rock. In our story, Mr. Tuck and the 13 Heroes, Melinda the nurse was lucky enough to meet Mr. Tuck later in life and show her gratitude and help stay with him when he was in the hospital. So if you need something to help you feel better about things in life, take your little gratitude stone and think of the heart and think of the people that love you and hold it tight and it will help you get through your troubles and your day. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time.